Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. My name is Jeremy Champa. We're going to be looking at the third passage from October 2020 SAT reading. So this is the dual passage. So let's just talk a little bit about how to approach a dual passage. It's not wise to try to take in all of the reading and then do all of the questions. Because there's two passages, they're going to be related sometimes, and in this case I think it's true, that it's kind of hard to differentiate the two. Certainly there's a difference, but I think it's better to just deal with passage one, deal with the questions that are specifically about passage one, do the same thing for passage two, and then at the end do the questions that apply to both passages. And luckily that's generally the order in which the questions appear. So let's start with the introduction. Passage one is adapted from cloud seeding, not effective at producing rain as once thought. Um, new research shows. Okay, so that's enough. That's the only part that appeals or that applies to passage one. So let's jump in and do our skim. In many areas of the world, including California's Mojave Desert, rain is a precious and rare resource. To encourage rainfall, scientists use cloud seeding a weather modification process designed to increase precipitation amounts by dispersing chemicals into the clouds. Okay, so I read that whole paragraph because it was short and it seemed important. I'm going to try to skip some stuff in these next couple paragraphs. But research now reveals that that common practice of cloud seeding with materials such as silver oxide and frozen carbon dioxide may not be as effective as it had been hoped. Um, end of the paragraph. These people, I'm not going to read their names, have dispelled the notion that cloud seeding is an effective mechanism for precipitation enhancement. So cloud seeding doesn't work according to the most recent study. During the course of his study, Professor Albert and his colleagues looked over 50 years worth of data on cloud seeding with an emphasis on rainfall amounts. Okay, so we're talking about the work they did. Uh, end of the paragraph is still more about the procedure. Next paragraph, by comparing rainfall statistics with periods of seeding, we were able to show that the increments of rainfall happened by chance. Okay, so talking about the results. And really in the, in the words of the professor. And I'll read the last quote here too. For the first time, we were able to explain the increases in rainfall through changing weather patterns instead of using cloud seed, of the use of cloud seeding. Okay, so there's another explanation for the changes in rainfall. It's not cloud seeding, according to this uh, professor. Um, let's read about this much of the next paragraph. Most notable was a six-year period of increased rainfall, originally thought to be a product of successful cloud seeding. Um, just by that, it tells me that it's, it's not because of cloud seeding, according to passage, this, these people. Um, is this the end of the paragraph here? Yes, and the end of the passage. So let's read the end here. They observed a sim similarly significant rain enhancement over the Judean mountains, an area which was not the subject of seeding. So again, this idea that there's something else causing the seeding. That's simple enough, and we can jump in. Okay, the first one is a uh, word in context kind of question. So what does the word practice mean in context? Um, well, remember, don't answer these questions based on memory. Always, uh, I shouldn't say not on, on memory. Don't base these, um, don't pick your answer based on what you already know to be the primary definition of practice. Go up and see what, the use of the word practice is in this case. Sorry, my scrolling is out of control here. My computer is kind of acting up in that way. Line eight, um, the, the common practice of cloud seeding with materials such as the common um, uh, action. It doesn't have to be perfect. Action or um, method, those are words that I'm thinking are related here. Let's go down and see what we have. Um, procedure sounds good. It's not a profession. It's not the job. It's not a background or a rehearsal. Rehearsal is sort of like the primary definition, probably wrong. In this case, procedure. And what you can do is you can kind of just replace procedure, the common procedure of cloud seeding with certain materials. Absolutely, that's the right answer then. Number 22, the main purpose of the third paragraph of passage one. Now, you've heard me talk about, probably, if this isn't your first time, talking with me or listening to me talk about the SAT reading section, you've probably heard me say something about purpose questions. When it asks for the main purpose of a paragraph, that's different than when it asks about purpose function. Uh, for instance, um, you know, if they just give you just a couple lines and they ask you for the purpose or function 
um, that's a different kind of thing. So here we're asked about the whole third paragraph. I'm just going to kind of read a little bit above and below because that's what sometimes works on purpose questions. But I'm certainly going to read sort of like the topic sentence and concluding sentence of that paragraph as well. Um, and let's see. We this was talking about the you know the pa the paragraph above was talking about what they've learned. This paragraph seems to be talking about the way in which they did their study. So that's like the procedure, right? During the course of his study, they did this sort of thing. Um, and the research team used comprehensive rainfall database. I'm reading the end of the paragraph here and compared statistics. Okay, so this is their procedure, the work that they did. Um, describe a methodology that led to a new understanding. Maybe detail the solution to a scientific puzzle. Hmm. Gauge the success of an approach to an issue. Suggests that the extent of a problem has been exaggerated. Okay, I don't think we're talking about a problem. I think I'm going to have to do more reading here to find an answer. But I don't think we're talking about the problem. We're talking about whether or not the solution of cloud seeding worked for this problem of, you know, rainfall or lack thereof. Gauge the success of an approach to an issue. I love that answer because it's super vague. Detail the solution to a scientific puzzle. I don't... Okay, so... I, th I have a problem with that, but let me just kind of go back up and do some more reading first. Describe a methodology. I love that, generally speaking, but it also feels like they're baiting me, and I'll explain why. Let me see. It was, um, sorry, I'm jumping all over the place here, trying to use my arrows instead of scrolling. Describe a methodology that led to a new understanding. Okay, that's close. I'm really close to picking uh, either B or D, but let's kind of read a little bit more closely and I'll explain what I'm noticing here. Um, I mean, maybe I'll just start by saying this. Um, the thing with D is, do they actually describe the way that they get to this new understanding, the methodology, the way, the procedure? Did they really describe it that led to a new understanding? Because if so, that's right. Um, the success of an approach to an issue. So gauging the success of cloud seeding, um, which is the approach to an issue, which is, you know, a lack of rain. Those are the two things I'm noticing with B and D. I kind of put them in my own words to give myself a parameter or a set of parameters in through which to judge if an answer is correct. Okay, so let me kind of, and I'll talk about C in a little bit, but let me just kind of read a little bit closer here. My question is, are they detailing and describing the methodology? I looked at over 50 years worth of data on cloud seeding with the emphasis on rainfall amounts in a target area. The research team used a comprehensive rainfall database and compared statistics from periods of seeding and non-seeding, as well as amounts of precipitation in the adjacent non-seeded areas. Whoo! Those are some close answers. Gauge the success of an approach to an issue. Was cloud seeding successful? Gauge the success or describe a methodology that led to a new understanding. Well, I'm leaning towards D. I'm going to do a little bit more reading. Gauge the success. I'm wondering about um, is the purpose of this paragraph, going back to what the question actually asked, to gauge the success. This doesn't talk about the results. For that reason, I think the right answer is not going to be gauge the success of something. They're just talking about how, like how, you know, they're talking about the um, the way in which they did the work. So I think D is going to be the right answer. Okay, and what I'm going to do, just to double check I'm right, as I don't know what the right answer is here, I'm doing this work with you, is look what the right answer is here. 22 is D. Yeah, so I think we were right. Um so that was really close. And I don't memorize the answers before I make these videos because I want you to sh I want to show you exactly and be honest with you about exactly how to approach these questions, All right? So if I memorize the answers beforehand, you're going to get like a fake sense from me of like how to approach the question. I'm going to have even if I don't mean to, I'm going to have some bias towards the right answer. So, you know, there's a lot of SAT questions. I've done this before, but I, I, you know, I don't remember the answer to every question. So I, 
I think that what we just saw there is the way that little words change which answer is right. In this case, I had to really think carefully about like the word success was my key here. We didn't talk about if it was right or wrong, or that it was successful or not. We just talked about actually doing the work to then get the results later in the passage. This gauging the success happens later. So describe a methodology. How exactly do they gain this new understanding? I love the vagueness of that phrase, new understanding. The scientific puzzle thing and detail of solution, look, there was no solution given here. The solution would be like, do we know whether cloud seeding works or not, or a different way to do cloud seeding, or a different way to increase rainfall. None of those things are happening in this paragraph. So that's why C is out. Um, okay, challenging. Let's keep going. It can be reasonably inferred for passage one. I just want to see if this, is this evidence? It sure is. 24 is evidence for 23. So let's talk about how to do those. Um, look, it says reasonably inferred. Infer, imply, suggest, indicate is a set of words that I want you to pay attention to. That's the frame of the question. Um, the same way purpose or function could be the frame of a question. When you see that, you're looking for oftentimes the language of negation, though not always the case. That means to say if it says um, it's not, uh, someone is not tall, it implies they're at least sort of short. Right, so not tall is negating tallness, and it would imply, or in, you could infer shortness from that. That's what we're talking about. Um, okay, let's see. It can be reasonably inferred from passage one that an important reason for the conclusions reached by Alpert and his colleagues was the presence of. Okay, so the conclusion is definitely outside of the paragraph we were just looking at. Let's see. Um, I mean, I would imagine typically these questions are in chronological order. I'm imagining that it's after 18 to 25, so I'm really focusing on C and D. Think about how much time that saves you if, you, if you're successful in doing that approach. So 26 to 28, 32 to 37, we're saying um, an important reason that they were able to reach a conclusion was the presence of something. Like, so what was the reason they were able to reach their conclusion up here? Um, by comparing, so here's the 26 through 28. By comparing rainfall statistics with periods of seeding, we're able to show that the increments of rainfall happened by chance. Okay, and the other set was, well, you know, that's somewhat connected, but the presence of, I don't know what the what thing would be the presence that we're speaking of here, 32 to 37. Okay, look at these lines. I think these are going to be right. Most notable was a six-year period of increased rainfall, originally thought to be the product of cl successful cloud seeding. They showed that this increase corresponded with a specific type of cyclone, which is consistent with increased rainfall over mountainous regions. Hmm. Okay, I, I'm not totally convinced which one is right yet. Um, so let me kind of look at what we have for answers. And I mean, it could be true that it could be, you know, it could have broken chronology, so it could be other stuff. Conditions that could reasonably account for an apparent increase in rainfall. I think that's that cyclone thing. The ongoing scarcity of rainfall in different and seemingly unrelated areas of the world. Now, I remember some other lines that said that, but I, none of those lines really said that. The data available to sh allow comparison of rainfall in Israel with areas of other countries, a generally accepted account of cloud seeding over the past 50 years. I don't think it's the generally accepted understanding or account of cloud seeding. Because we don't see on those lines something like they relied on any assumptions about cloud seeding. I don't know about other countries either. So unrelated areas of the world, scarcity of rainfall, that's B, or um, conditions that reasonably account for an apparent increase in rainfall. I feel like that's the cyclone thing. Let me go back up again here. Um, and, you know, I will consider just for fun, let's consider some of the other lines, 18 to 22, because I just saw something about Israel, but there's nothing about other countries, so that's why that's out. I'm not going to keep going with those other sets because I think we were close here. Um, let's see. So by comparing 26 to 28, by comparing rainfall statistics with periods of seeding, we were able to show happened by chance. That doesn't, okay, it's definitely the cyclone thing. Because it said, look, they said they originally thought it was cloud seeding, but
but they showed this increase corresponded with a specific type of cyclone, which is consistent with increased rainfall over mountainous regions. So 32 to 37 matches this idea of um, conditions that could reasonably account for an apparent increase in rainfall. That's the cyclone. Nice and broad, that's the right answer. Um, okay, cool. So, you know, there was, the, B was really tempting based on those last lines of passage one, because at the bottom of the page it said, um, you know, this other area. Um, significant rain enhancement, however, so I think that was off in that way. Um, no scar scarcity and yeah, ongoing scarcity with uh, is is not uh, is not matching with this Jujain Mountains area. So and that was outside of the evidence anyway, so it's sort of irrelevant. Um, so this next question, I believe, may be talking about the next passage. Right, those lines look like they're from the next passage, the 40s and onward. So now it's time to go skim passage two. Um, so just to finish out here, I just want to notice how mapping works here. I didn't say it explicitly, but evidence sets are all about mapping. Conditions that could reasonably account for increased rainfall, that was the cyclone, right? And an important reason they could reach this conclusion well, look, the paragraph about conclusions is where we found this. Um, most notable, right? So look, here, they have like, they said, for the first time we were able to explain it. So now we feel like we have proof. What is that proof? Most notable is this stuff, right? So there's, we're talking about the reasons that we feel good about our conclusions. Cool. Hope that's helpful. Let's move on. Um, passage two. Again, I'm not going to try to read everything, just the key parts at beginnings and ends of paragraphs. Passage 2. Last year marked the conclusion of a massive six-year study that has been the most comprehensive and rigorous to date to investigate whether cloud seeding actually increases precipitation. Then they say, you know, something about the project. Down at the bottom. Um, this one is saying that cloud seeding does work in some way. Right, that's what I see at the bottom there. But the results do provide a body of evidence that cloud seeding is working under certain conditions. Earlier studies would inject silver iodide into the clouds and then compare them. I would stop reading except I see the word but. But the studies weren't repeatable, so there was some problem with the old studies. Um, the challenge is, so something about what the challenge is, I'm not even going to read those details. Next, still these researchers thought they could address the drawbacks of past studies. So now they have this new study. Um, they conducted all these tests. Measurements of the resolution of snow. So we're talking about results now. But this result was achieved only after they threw out some of the tests where the silver iodine drifted into control clouds. Nevertheless, all the results provided evidence for a positive trend. So it seems like they're saying they have some evidence, though it's not super strong, that cloud seeding is working. The scientists also took advantage of new developments in remote sensing and atmospheric models to examine dynamics. So you know, stuff that they used. I don't have to understand every detail. Last paragraph, remote sensing observations are valuable. So why is this new technology valuable? Because radar can describe growth of snow in a cloud in a more immediate way. So better data. And then at the end here, detailed remote sensing measurements of cloud dynamics are cheaper and more doable. So we're talking about just like different research methods. And we don't have to know all the details. And I'm not going to get bogged down in those details because I don't care until they ask me a question about it. And that can be very liberating. I know it can be a little bit unnerving at first. It's very liberating to say, I don't care about the details until it matters for a question. So number 25, which choice best supports the idea that the conclusions of the WWMPP cannot be regarded with complete confidence? Oh, there were so many of those lines. Um, generally speaking, it should be chronological. So maybe one of the first two, um, I would imagine. Um, that's not for sure, though, because these um, passages, this could be like a, a general question about passage two, right? But it does give a specific line. So I'm going to lean on those first two. Not something about not complete confidence. Forty-four and fifty-six. Let's start there. Um, so, I mean, these lines. I mean, there is this thing about they weren't able to. In the end, they weren't able to provide a definitive answer. If forty-nine is part of our evidence, then I'm almost perfectly confident it's not. So, don't go with. A, I don't think. 56 to 58. I'll go up and just check what 47, that last line said. No. Uh, 56 to 58. 
was just about what earlier studies couldn't do. So I don't like that as ta saying something about the WWMPP studies. So we are going to violate chronology a little bit here, it looks like. 75 to 79, you, I, you know, I kind of told you to maybe expect that in this situation. I mean, look, this just says they threw out some of the data. That's probably it. You know, if you if you throw if it's this is WM WWMPP now, so we are talking about the right study, right? These are the researchers. These are their their results. This says they threw out some data. You know, even just the word "but" um, kind of lets you know. And then 94, 91 to ninety four. Let's just make sure that that's not right here. This is just saying better data, right? So that doesn't cast any doubt on it. It has to be answer choice C. The only one that casts doubt on a situation that is about WWMPP. So a little bit out of order. Now the chronology game is super useful, but you heard me kind of cast doubt on it in this case because it was sort of um, part of a dual passage. There's not that many of these questions, so it's not necessarily chronological. So keep those caveats in mind, those sort of limitations to these strategies. Um, number 26, which choice best represents the difference in meaning of run in using these different ways? Interesting. 46 and 48, how is run different? Um, so the study was operated or done by a group on those lines. So let me just deal with half of this answer first. Um, I like supervised and conducted, carried maybe. Definitely not evaded. Line 68. Um, to the researchers designed their $14 million project to run for six winter seasons. I kind of feel like they're the same, so I better look more carefully at the original, the first one. Um, the project, the study was run by a team. And then down here to keep going or to so like in the first case we're talking about people doing something and the second case we're talking about the project sort of running itself i know that's not exactly right but that's like a distinction that's good enough operative enough um continue to carry on conducted and carry on it's going to be right here they don't want it to complete you know, the thing is these words should fit directly in and i think most clear supervised and conducted both sound good but i think it's pretty clear that complete is wrong if we look on that second um, said here, the researchers designed their $14 million project to complete for six winters. No, to continue for six winters. So just plug those words directly back in. That's the best way to deal with vocabulary questions. So words in context is what they call them. Okay, 27 says the fifth paragraph of passage two serves primarily to. So we ha it's a short paragraph, and we have to think about what's the purpose of that paragraph. I do need to know what's said in that paragraph, which is essentially something about new data the the kind or the kind of technology they used to gather data um new developments in um in remote sensing and atmospheric models okay and then they tell us that these are valuable down here so it introduces the new technology that sort of gives more credence to these results because remember these results are a little bit shaky but they use the latest data or the latest technology that's what we're getting out of that Highlights an advanced technique, yes. Compares the effectiveness, no, there's no comparison of two things. It's just the newer one. Um, explore the methods used to justify cloud seeding, no. To justify the results, explore the technology, not the methods. But methods is close, but to justify whether or not the study is useful, not whether cloud seeding is useful. And to suggest that some key information may have been compromised, no. We're saying, you know, and we'll look back, I'll show you. Um, this paragraph seems to suggest that, you know, it has a very optimistic tone. New developments um, to examine dynamics inside a small subset of seeded clouds, right? So we're saying we have better technology to examine this stuff, not to justify whether or not you should cloud seed, just whether or not it's effective. Um, okay, so we got that one. It's uh, highlight an advanced technique that improved the study. So after they said, you know, the study got, they had to throw out some data in order to get this. They're like, but we use this great technology and this new stuff that would make our work even more valid. Okay, so we have 28, what, which best describes the relationship between the two passages? Okay, so these are ones that sometimes you have to go back, but you can probably start them without going back. 
So I could start this by saying the first passage is saying cloud seeding doesn't work, and the second one is saying cloud seeding does sometimes work. Each passage explored an experiment addressing a certain problem. Sure. And these experiments have similar weaknesses. I don't know if they have similar weaknesses. I think they kind of have different weaknesses. Each passage describes a research study about the same practice. Yes. But these studies yield different conclusions. Absolutely. Um, pass it, let's look at C. Look, there, some people will be like, why are you going to keep looking if you know that B is right? Well, I think that B is right, but I don't know. And if C is really compelling, then I'll save it, cross off the other ones, and then kind of compare the two because that's when you can really tell the difference between two answers, when you've gotten rid of two bad ones and you have two reasonable ones left. So C, it's not a general discussion of an ongoing scientific puzzle. It's a specific discussion of one specific study that says that, you know, the scientific um, puzzle, whether or not cloud seeding works, is now we think, no, that's what passage one is doing. So C is wrong. Um, the significance of a research finding that passage two argues has only limited. No. Passage two is saying cloud seeding works most sometimes. Passage one is saying it doesn't work. So that's different than saying passage two is saying, oh, it's kind of only limited. No, it's not the case. Different conclusions, same practice, answer choice B. 29, which choice best reflects the designs of the studies explored in passage one and passage two, respectively? Ooh, um, that's a good technical question. We're going to have to go back and read for this. Um, what I'm doing is I'm kind of looking at the differences between answer choices. You know, seated versus unseated or just seated is, pass is, is answer choice A. B is about different environments in a single country, but I don't know. I feel like passage one only talked about one country. I feel like I already know that. Passage, research in passage one utilize readily available equipment, cutting edge technology. Ooh, I know the cutting edge technology part is right. I don't know about readily available equipment. Existing data, whereas the researchers conducted new experiments. I think that's right. Let's double check. So, okay. Like new equipment versus old equipment, new data versus, you know, new experiment versus old data, um, seeded and unseeded versus just seeded. I'm looking at A, C, and D as my possible answers. Okay, so let's figure out this thing. I really like D, so I'm going to start with this. Was it existing data or did they get new data? Um, and the most, ah. Uh, Look at passage one. In the most comprehensive reassessment of the effects um, over the course of the study, they looked over 50 years worth of data and they compared. So there doesn't look like there's any new data in passage one. We know that they did new data. The WWMPP did their study. It was, you know, six winter seasons and $14 million project. I'm now convinced um, that in passage one, they didn't do any new experiments and in passage two they did so d has got to be right um so there are other answer choices that are close but that's kind of a slam dunk and that's why i like that one um once i've definitively proven that answer choice or that d um i'm sorry that passage one analyzed existing data and passage two did new stuff i'm done Okay, compared to the way in which the author of Passage 1 presents Alpert's study, the author of Passage 2 presents WWMPP as being definitely less definitive because Passage 1 is like, Alpert proved it, right? And let's just double check. I'll show you exactly where that happened. Um, look, Passage 1 says, first, I mean, this does say may, may be less effective than it had, than it had been hoped. Um, but then here it says they've dispelled the notion that cloud seeding is an effective me mechanism for precipitation enhancement, right? So they, it, they seem pretty clear about this. Whereas passage two starts by saying like, um, there's this big study and then, you know, there's some, you know, these this language where it says the results do provide a body of evidence that suggests it's working under certain conditions. And then um, this person, this writer says, you know, down here, importantly, 
um, that there's sort of drawbacks to this, that there's a challenge to this work. The studies weren't repeatable. Um, for, so for all these reasons, um, you know, here's a good example. Like, but there's a, you know, we talked about these lines before. They threw out some of the data. Nevertheless, there's a positive trend. So it's not as definitive. They're not making as strong a case. You can't help but read those two and think, well, the first person's really, you know, confident the second person is not. So I don't know about the approach part, like less flexible, mm, less, more relevant, as well, more abstract. It's not more abstract because they did the experiment. Abstract would be like less real or less um, grounded in observable reality. It's not just more relevant because the it's they're both relevant to the idea of whether or not cloud seeding works. There's nothing about a lack of flexibility, so it's definitely less definitive in its approach because it it measured what happened in this one place, whereas passage one was talking about sort of like they they did a comprehensive fifty year study. So A is the best answer for number thirty. Look in that passage, there wasn't as many things about. Um, sort of the framing of questions, but still what's important is the strategy of how you approach the dual passage. And so hopefully that helped here. Um, and breaking answers into pieces, noticing that sometimes half the answer sounds right, but you gotta make sure the entire answer sounds right. Hopefully that's helpful. Let me know if I can be in it of any more help. And I strongly suggest collaboration among friends. You're gonna hear me say that all the time. Please, if you haven't already done it, Find a study buddy. Find someone that you can talk to about this stuff and discuss questions together, discuss what I'm talking about, and you know, throw some ideas around. It may not be perfect, but it will be super helpful if you have another person to bounce ideas off of. Um, and the last thing I'll say is, look, I'm not perfect at this stuff, of course, and I'm not saying that there's no chance that, uh, there's certainly some chance that there's other approaches to these questions. But I've been working on the SAT for a long time. I'm 35. I started talking about this test when I was 18. So I've done a lot of work on this stuff, and I've noticed some patterns. So even if you think there's an argument against sort of um, my, if there's an argument against my explanation, there probably is in the world, but maybe not on the SAT itself, right? So what I'm trying to do is equip you to understand how to approach questions on this test. I do believe that SAT questions are somewhat a little bit subjective. I understand that um, that critique. And in fact, when the test changed in 2015, I felt like I was all of a sudden having some issues with the new test. But then after I looked at all the new exams, I felt like I came to an understanding of exactly how the test operates. The test makers have to be predictable and consistent. If you can figure out the way in which they're predictable and consistent, then you can beat the test. That's what I'm trying to show you. So hopefully that's helpful. And feel free to message me, email me, comment, uh, do whatever you like. Get in touch if you want to. Don't if you don't want to. Happy studying. Take care.